If I got collar tie and, and, and wrist control, later on, especially against a kid for MMA, it can apply there or it can apply almost the same way with the high underhook. Some of the stuff you'll see in my advanced eight takedown uh, video, you can go ahead and watch that too, or my hour long video on takedowns. But this is just because it's a similar position now, I'm gonna like link it in the brain to put probably like four main attacks together and maybe a rolling elbow and maybe a jawbreaker and some cool stuff in there as well. Um, I got collar tie, always kind of tight, gooseneck. I got my wrist control. I'm looking at Uchimata, I'm looking at ankle pick, I'm looking at schoolboy, uh, or, or sorry, baseball slide heel hook, and I'm looking at knee tap. So I'm going to learn how to put those four together. So number one from here would just be how to, how to off balance him. I'm going to make him step, I'm going to pull on his head, and I'm going to look on his ear. If he doesn't react any other way, I go into whatever I'm doing. If he has a good reaction and posture, then I can follow up. And that's what it is about chain linking techniques together. I'm going to come here, yank him to try and make that step. And I'm looking in the side of the ear. Oh man, there ain't nothing there. I'm looking right in that ear. Well, I don't see a lot. But hey, fighters. So now I'm here. And I can hit my Uchimata from there. I got my step. I'm going to step in between. I'm going to take my back step. My butt's already touching his leg. I'm going to pull this across as I mule kick up to the step. Boom, and there I could have broken the, the elbow there on the street for self-defense. Or go into an arm bar for grappling. Here, pull. One, two, and out. I'm pulling through. Boom, boom, whatever. Okay, so there's my Uchimata. Also, I can go into uh, my ankle pick, and you can kind of like semi-circle around and get different angles. I'm going to get him to make that step. And now I step this foot right here so it's touching. And I can even take him down now because I made a good step with just my shin pressure. So you always want good steps, good footwork. I'm here. Boom. Step. Pulling. Pushing. Now I pick it with my hand as well. Now I can go to any pass or hitting if I need to for MMA or I can just knee slide or I can come out. That's fine. But while I'm here, I might want to do something like suck this up, attach this. Then I'm going to bring this knee through, put it to the mat, other knee down, and I'm going to slide out for my tripod eight block. Right here. Boom, boom, grabbing it with the hand, coming inside, sliding in for my quick kill there. So there's your tripod ankle lock. Okay, so whether you, you don't necessarily have to do tripod ankle lock, but it, it is a nice follow up from there. Most people don't know this technique. Um, it's been attempted twice in the UFC. Claudia Goodell got pretty close. And then, uh, I can't remember who just tried it the other day, but I remember the commentator, Dan Hardy, didn't know what it was. And they're like, oh, a leg lock, knee bar. But he was actually, it became like a sloppy knee bar. Uh, the, the Polish guy, um, he attempted it, came pretty close. Okay, so now I can chain these two together. If I first attempt, or I can use it as a fake, or I'm a little far away, I might just be able to bump him and not really get a throw with that Uchimata. But I can bump that, and then there's my ankle pick. Okay, so sometimes a Uchimata sets up, it's like a one-two punch. Here, boom, I'm too far away maybe to really hit that Uchimata, but I'll bang him, and then, oh, there I go. Okay, and then I can pass, whatever. So, know that one can go into the other. The converse is also true. I'm really trying to get this ankle pick. The homeboy wrestled, and I didn't know it when we were out of tournament, and instead of like this, where I broke his structure and his posture, I did, Ugh! Wrestler time, strong neck, head up to the sky. So I don't know. You don't know it like a grappling tournament, right? So I come in here and I get oh wrestling style. So now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go for that ankle pick there, okay? Because I don't have this position. I don't have, I don't have this. This is different. I'm looking in his ear hole. His head is above the triangle point. He's off balance. For a strong neck wrestler, I get this reaction. And he comes up. 
Now I'm going to do, a, even if it's grappling, I'm going to give him a little uppercut elbow to the chest. That makes my kazushi, boom, slide in, bam, hit my uchimata off that. So off a of failed, you get a reaction off of that uh, ankle trip, um, ankle pick. You can go to the uchimata there. Ready? So I go here and he postures up. Here with a strong posture, bang him, boom, coming here. Okay, so you see how it's a one, two? Uh, same thing. Same thing. I get this reaction again. Boom, but I got that strong reaction. Okay. Insert. Insert. Insert baseball slide. Insert baseball slide. Boom. And now I'm working my heel hook position. Okay. So baseball slide heel hook. So we go into that as well. Uh, and fourth off of this could also be knee tap. So you know you just feel the guy's energy when you're going live. Sometimes I got that kind of maybe he's pulling up and it wasn't totally this, I just it's more backwards. So then I'll just run through that and hit a knee tap. So he's strong, he's good too. So maybe I can't get something as fancy. Okay, here. Oh. And it becomes a little ugly and bastardized. But look who's inside now. So you go for that knee tap. Okay. Let's take it to the cage. So, we'll first show this, and then kind of how it relates to this. High underhook with the clamp, I call it. <laughs> If I happen, this doesn't happen a lot in MMA, but it can. We could be in a plumb here, bam. I happen to get that wrist control, okay? Now from here, bang the knee. I always like, I always like everything inside here, so I got the liver shot with the knees, because that sets up your throat. So I could be here, bang the inside, which can open up his base a little bit, then bang the liver, and now I might be able to kind of Fujimata off the cage. Um, same thing. Okay. Bang. Bang. Right? And now I start hooking, pulling that out. And I hit a knee slide through. He starts to underhook him out the back. I counter with my wizard. Oh. And then I land my elbow. So. The ankle picture. Um, I don't know if I'm going to look good like this. I'm not Paul Harris, but it's kind of the same thing he was doing in one of his fights. I got this. Okay. Wham. 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 Right? Anytime you got that wrist control. Also, here's the cool rolling elbow. I'm going to shoulder punch him. Yeah, okay. Shoulder punch, roll the elbow over the top. So I'm gonna cut him right down there. Watch how easy this goes in. Boom, bang, way. Perfect distance. Here, I'm pressuring in, knee pin. Liver shot, shoulder bump, rolling, cutting, slicing, downward elbow. Okay, just cool thing. Anytime here, boom. Okay. Um, uh, what was next? Oh, the leg lock. Okay. So I'm here. Not necessarily, this isn't necessarily something I would do, but I mean, if you know, you got your bet weight, sucky striker, and you're a sicker grappler than the guy, maybe. So I'm here pressuring him, I can't get the other takedown to make it my grappling game. Then I might use that pressure, that bounce off the cage, to still kind of slide in and then end up on the heel hook. So, um, I was good at that. Now, also, if I'm in here, or I'm in here, or I'm in here, 
Plum clench. I might do something like this. I already got pretty strong neck control. Okay, and I'm pinning them in. Bang. Bang. Nice one right there. Got that vertebrae for me. That's $35 adjustment. Okay, so I'm already here. Or here. Or here. Whatever. Plum. Doesn't matter. I'm going to roll, especially if I got my thumb this way. And I got my gable grip or a three finger G in the bell grip. I roll my head underneath and I drive it up. And there's my jaw popper, Dan Severin style, G in the bell style. All this stuff, guys, can also be applied with the underhook. This is my typical position against the cage. I do my punch, my 12 punch or whatever into my underhook. I drive into the cage. I get the knee pin so my foot's against the cage. He's not going to scoot out. See, a lot of guys leaning like this, he can scoot out either way. I wasted all that energy to get him there, keep him there, dominate the position. Boom, my knee pin. Knee pin saves you a lot of energy. If you're gassed, if you were duking it out for three minutes, knee pin this, win the round. Okay, so knee pin in here, and obviously head control, same side as your high, clamp, underhook, all this kind of same stuff's gonna work. I can now bang him, bounce him if it was a cage, and now kind of I can do a shoulder lever, as well as an uchimata, doesn't matter. I'll just do straight up shoulder level now. So I bounce him against the cage, boom, and then take him down, wherever. So shoulder lever uh, works well. I can also launch him a little bit. It'd be better if we got a little space from bounce off, rebound off the cage. But I'm here with my pin, bang, kick, bang, liver, thank you, head control. Now I'm going to shoulder the lever this tight at the same time. And I'm going to give it a little uchimata problem and start coming down to my position. Okay, so everything, leg lock, I'm not going to go over it. Same thing, you can hit the baseball slide, leg lock, off that underhook, um, can hit the ankle trip, like here. Maybe I try to come.